What's up, Internet? My name is Nick Thompson, and today we've got elementary audio tutorial number four. Um, today we're going to take a look at uh, some like quick delay effects to show you how to process microphone input. This might also be the type of way you would um, write, for example, an effect plugin uh, to run inside of a DAW so that you can take an input buffer, process over it, and output the result. Um, First thing I want to say before we get started, as usual, if this is the first video that you're seeing, um, I, I recommend starting with the prior videos wherein I explain what this whole thing is, because um, today I just want to jump in. Um, I will try to keep today's video shorter. I know that I said that last time and then didn't actually do it. I'm going to try again. <laughs> And then the last thing that I want to say before we jump in is uh, I think that this will be the last tutorial video, at least for a little bit of time, um, because I think that after this, I feel comfortable that I've kind of covered the basics or given at least a, a you know, enough breadth over the basics to, to get you up and running. But um, definitely, you know, reach out to me, hit me up on Discord or by email or something. Uh, feel free to ask questions and let me know anything that you want answered in this format, I'm happy to, to do it again. Um, okay, so with that, let's jump in. So again, we're starting with um, the Hello World. This is a single channel sine tone at 440 hertz multiplied by 0 0.3, just so that it's not super loud in your headphones. And if I run this, that's what we hear. So I want to pause pretty much right away to show this invocation of elementary right here. So I'm invoking elementary at the command line and I'm passing dash i2 dash o4 and then I'm invoking this directory. And so if I, if I run or whenever you run elementary, um, you can pass the help flag to, you know, to, to look at this and this will basically show you kind of all of your command line argument options. And so the ones we're looking at today are dash i and dash o, inputs and outputs. By default, when elementary spins up, it's going to open the audio driver with no microphone input and two um, output channels, basically the standard con configuration that you have on you know, your laptop. Um, but if you pass dash i2, elementary will open up uh, you know, two microphone input channels and start processing them. And so um, you know, by default, this is off trying to avoid uh, cases where you could basically create f feedback loops that spiral out of control. Um, but I've enabled that and I have four outputs only because I have um, the way I have my screen recorder set up, I have a loopback audio device um, so that you can hear my mic and the sound that elementary makes. So I have four channels here just so that I can avoid a feedback loop in the recording. But for those of you who will run this example at home, and I'll, I'll publish this example online after this, um, you should be fine to run it with dash i2 dash o2. Okay, so let's come back in. Um, so we are going to open it with an input, two inputs, four outputs, but how do we actually do anything with that? Well, all we have to do here is basically change this to el.in. And as I mentioned, because of the screen recorder situation, I need to be careful about channels one and two so that I don't create a feedback loop for you. So I'm just gonna go, oops, a zero and a zero, that's the left, the left and right channel. Um, and that will make sure that my screen recorder does not have a feedback loop. And then for channels three and four, which you will hear, but will not feedback on itself, um, I'm just gonna put IN and IN. And if we run this, I don't really know if you'll be able to hear it because it's, it's probably just my voice doubling. But for example, I could uh, delay this with size. So this is, um, this is just the delay node in elementary. The size here specifies like the maximum number of samples that the delay line will hold. This value is how many samples we actually want to read behind the right pointer. And then this is just a, a feedback gain. So if I run this now, test, 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 test. Yeah, cool. So yeah, we've got the echo in the left channel. Right. 
So um, that is kind of the basics of it. And again, attempting to be really quick, um, we're not gonna do too much more than this, but I wanna show you a few fun things. First thing is el.in by itself, um, by default, will pass the first microphone input. And so right now, actually, we have the left channel of the microphone in going into the delay and then also into the right channel. And so if I wanted to make this properly stereo, I would say, you know, this input will take channel zero and this input, whoops, will take channel one. And so now I have left going to left, right going to right, and on the left, we've got a feedback delay. Now, um, let's make this a little bit more interesting. So I will actually take this, duplicate it, and let's start by just putting different delay values on the left and the right. Testing. 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 Cool. cool. Pretty cool. interesting cool. little stereo cool. delays already. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually kind of it's actually kind of a voice on it. Um, how about let's? Uh, I'm going to copy over to this file here. This will be the file that actually shows up in the um, in the example. Or this is the one I'm actually going to publish for the example. But I'm going to take pieces and walk through it for you here. So this modulate function, I, I have this from an earlier example. And this is really just kind of like taking a value x and then modulating it with a sine wave, kind of like a sine LFO. Um, and then let's take this flanger. So a flanger is just a delay line that with a really, really short um, you know, tap behind the right pointer and then modulating that tap. So for example, we have right here, MS2 samps LFO, and the LFO time just modulates four milliseconds uh, between like four plus or minus 3.9 milliseconds. So, you know, generally between zero and eight milliseconds and it modulates it at 0 0.1 Hertz um, with a pretty high feedback coefficient here. So we've got modulate, we've got flanger, we have our things down here. Let's flanger them. Test. Cool. <laughs> freaky. 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 Really freaky. Really freaky. Really freaky. And then maybe, um, I don't know, maybe we'll do something like we'll low pass this guy 800. And maybe we'll high pass the other channel. Just trying to create something, you know, some interesting stereo differences. Testing. 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 Again, just trying to keep this short, just trying to show the type of thing that you can do here. Um, and you know, depending on your, your audio input, you could you know, take a hardware synth in and, and modulate it. Uh, you can do all sorts of stuff. Um, so the last thing I wanna do to wrap up this video and to wrap up this series, at least for now, is to share the website is online and I'm happy about that. Finally, it is elementary.audio and you'll find this guy and on the website, there is a link to the documentation, how to install it and get up and running. There is a link to the Discord channel and a link to the GitHub where you will find the example code, pretty much all the stuff that I've been showing in these tutorial videos. Um, that's all I got. As always, please jump into the Discord if you're interested. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what you're working on. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll see you around for another video in the future. Thanks.